it's right. So I have experienced the closed door in my face when man said, it's yours. God said, no, it ain't. I tried to kick it open, right? <coughs> what I should have done was just listen. Mm -hmm. Because he had something so much better in store for me. Yes, did I leave eight years early on a full 30 year time? Yep, I sure did. I sure did. Did I freeze it? Nope, I went ahead and drew it. Monthly, I, I retired. I retired at 42 years old from TDC. Drew my retirement, not out. I brought a retirement check. It ain't a whole lot, by the way, because when you leave that early, it ain't going to be much. <laughs> okay? But look at what God has done in my life since then. Amen. Amen. I've pastored a church in Madisonville for over 10 years, or about 10 years. I was there longer than that, before that. But now I've traveled and seen so many other places and experienced so much other uh, joy and ministry. And now God has brought me here. Because he closed one, and then he opened another one. And I jumped through it. So I want you to know that when doors close, there's an open door coming. Amen? Amen. There's an open door coming. Listen to this. Jeremiah 29, 11 is one of my favorite verses. For I know. Who knows? God knows. Amen? For I know the plans I have. Everybody say I. I. That's God. Everybody say, let's, let's read it like this. For God knows. Everybody say that. For God, God knows. knows the, plans the plans he has, he has for, me. for me. Everybody say me and point at yourself. Me. me. Now listen. For God knows the plans he has for me, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper me and not to harm me. Plans to give me hope in the future. Man, personalize that scripture for yourself. Personalize it. And know that God's plans are better than our plans. Amen? God's plans are bigger than our plans. God's plans have more, they make more sense than our plans every single time. When I look back on all of that, when it comes to TDC, I think, thank you, Lord, for closing those two jobs away from me. I would have never left. I would have stayed. But instead, I closed them, and the door opened, and I'm doing what makes me the most joyful in my life. Yeah. Preaching the gospel, singing the gospel, pastoring for him. Amen? Amen? What a joy that is to be in your calling, and to do what God has called you to do. Paul, Paul and them passed right by. They didn't try to force it open, so they passed by in verse 8, it says. Verse 9, during the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over. So when God closes the door for Paul, he opens up another one and says, hey, I've got something else for you to do. Amen. Something else for you to do. Immediately, God supplies a different plan in verses 9 and verses 10. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once, in verse 10, to leave from Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Amen? Say amen. amen. Now, how many, can I ask y'all a real serious question? Everybody look at your pastor today. How many of y'all would rather God throw up a, about a 20 by 40 billboard sign on the interstate and say, hey, you need to turn right up here in 20 miles, and then 10 miles from there, you need to turn left, and you need to stop 0.3 miles from there, get out, kneel down, and I got something waiting on you. How many, how many of y'all would rather God do that? I mean, give you some specific, detailed signs, per se, to say, this is where I want you, this is how I want you to do it, and this is when I want it done, and this is, and this is how often I want you to do it. Wouldn't that be great? Can I tell you, God very rarely ever does that. Amen. He hardly ever is going to show up with a map. You see, this is what I believe about God's plans. I believe that God just wants you to be obedient and faithful. Let's say you have three choices. 
You're going to go the left road, the middle road, or the right road. Now, I'm talking about after you're saved. I ain't talking about salvation. There ain't but one way for salvation. Amen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's what Jesus said. Okay? One way for salvation. But this is what I believe about God's plans. The left way, I'm going to go to XYZ town, and I'm going to minister the gospel at a job, but I'm, I'm going to make sure that I'm in ministry. I'm going to do God's will in XYZ town. The middle road takes me to ABC town, and I'm going to minister the gospel there, but it's a different job, a different area, different look, but I'm still going to be, I'm still going to be doing God's bidding. Amen. And then on the right wing over here, this looks like a chicken foot. Amen. On this other one, you go to a different town, you're still going to honor God. You're still going to live your life for Him. You're still going to be worthy of the calling that's been placed on you because of His grace and mercy. Can I just tell you, it don't matter which of those three paths you choose. If you're honoring God, He's going to honor you. Amen. I believe that. Now, God sometimes has a specific path for you. Don't get me wrong. And He'll make that clear to you. But if He hasn't made a specific path in a specific area and a specific job clear <coughs> to you guys, do something for Him. Amen. Go make a decision that honors Him in your job, Amen. in your family, in your community, in your, in your neighborhood. Amen? He will bless it, I promise you. Step through the doors, He opens for you. <coughs> I want to tell you, when God opens a door, this is, there's a couple of things. There's one thing for sure that you have to do. But there's more than a couple of things. I mean, there's more than one thing. There's a couple of things that you need to know about open doors. Psalm 9:10 says this: "Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you." Amen. You have to trust in Him. Amen. If you have an open door in front of you, you can't trust in your own abilities. You have to trust in God. And this is one of my favorite verses, Tanya's favorite verse that goes along with it is, th is six, but this is just five, Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Amen. You must trust in God with your jobs. Amen. With your money, marriage, children. <coughs> How many of y'all are dealing with children right now? Amen. Anybody dealing with a child? I got one of these. That one for you. You're like, well, why aren't you drinking? <laughs> yeah, she got another one too. <clears throat> Thanks for reminding me, though. <clears throat> Can I just tell you the hardest thing in the world when you're trusting in Him is to surrender your child to Him? Yeah. Yep. Right. Open doors. Yep. Maybe your child's got an open door. Maybe your child just stepped through an open door. Now mom and daddy have to trust God with their child. Yeah. And you just have to hope and pray that you raise them <laughs> the way God wanted you to raise them. Amen? Amen. And I will tell you, Scripture teaches us, you raise them in the ways of the Lord. When they grow up, they shall not. Now they may be a prodigal for a while. <laughs> They, might, they, they may wallow in the pig pen. They may be in a far country. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, they're going to grow up. They're going to learn some lessons. Maybe some hard ones. Everybody say, trust in God. Trust in God. He's got this. It's His hand that is on them. I want to tell you this. You must trust Him in the open door. But also about an open door is this. No one can shut it. Except God. That's right. No one can shut it. Revelation 3.8 says, I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door. Listen to this. That no one can shut. You wonder where I got that from. That no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. God opens it, and the only one who can shut it is He. Don't you let somebody convince you that you ain't smart enough, good enough, big enough, equipped enough. You know what? Likely, this is the truth. 
If God opens a door for you to do a ministry, you probably aren't equipped to do it. God does not call the equipped. He equips the call. Amen. He's looking for obedience. He's looking for a will from somebody to say, here I am, Lord, send me. Put me in, coach. Amen. Put me in, coach. He's looking for that person who'll say, I don't have it all figured out. I don't have the words figured out. I don't know what I'll say when I get there, but I'm going anyway, Lord, because I trust you. And he's looking for somebody that's going to jump through the door that opens up in front of him. He just needs willing people. Willing people. I want to tell you, when you say, when you show up to a ministry at your church, this ministry that we're about to do October 31st, well, how am I going to do this? I, I'm 75 years old. If you're 75 years old and you're still walking, you can help. Amen. 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 If you're 16, back there, y'all choking him. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, Chris, I'm depending on you big time October 31st. Amen. <laughs> he said, Hallelujah, Pastor. I got him this morning. I got him and him a big old hug. I'm pretending like I was going to kiss him on the cheek. He got scared. I love him. He's my brother. Amen. Love all our teenagers, man. I'm glad they're here. I'm glad they're here. Make no mistake, you cannot close the door that God opens. We can choose not to step through it. But when he opens it, it's open. And the devil can do nothing about it. Amen. This church is going to have a decision coming up really quickly. To step through a door. Amen. Amen. To move forward with this thing that fell off the wall there at all. Uh, must have done it just walked up. We're going to have a decision to make here coming up pretty quick. Amen. To move forward with something that we need. And we're going to have to jump through a door if God opens it. Amen. Amen. How do we do it? In faith. Amen. In trust. Moving forward with faith-filled feet. That's the only way to do it. Yeah. Revelation 3.8, I'll read it again. I know your deeds. God knows your deeds. I have placed before you an open door. Amen? No one can share. And then finally, this is three things. When God opens doors, you have to trust Him in it. No one can close it. And when God opens doors, He is the power behind it. Or He is effective. In verse 15, listen to what happens when Paul and his people listen to the vision. Okay? I'm going to paraphrase it. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's 11.34 and I know you guys got to eat. And I got places to go to. So listen, this is how it goes. Paul and his disciples, they get there. They pass by when the doors close. They get the vision. They hear the vision. They act on the vision. They go to the place where they're supposed to go, where God leads them. Amen. They go out of town. They find a bunch of women gathered together having a Bible study. Amen. For lack of better terms to call it in the day. They're gathered together and worshiping. Amen. And they go out there and they share the gospel. And when they share the gospel, what happens? Amen. What happens? When they share the gospel, this is what happens. Somebody gets saved. Woo! Come on. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. They were obedient. The door opened up. The vision came. They didn't go try to push down the closed door. They jumped through the open door. Went where God called them. They shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. This lady got saved. And guess what? Got baptized. And then had them over them. What's going to happen if all of you, this church, this church body, recognizes that God closes doors, and then when they see the open door, when we jump through it as a congregation, and we go where God has called us, and we do what God has told us, and we preach the truth of the gospel of Jesus, just think what's going to happen to these families that haven't even come here yet. Just think to the young people, and the old people, and grandmas and grandpas, and those who have not heard the truth of the gospel in a manner that drew them. When this church steps forward in faith 
Just like the Israelites, just like the Levites had to take the Ark of the Covenant down to the water and step into the raging, flooded river. Just think, when we are obedient and jump through this door and we get our feet wet in faith, the lives that will be changed because of our obedience, because of our desire to keep the main thing, the main thing, and not get sidetracked and minor. We don't want to major on the minors, amen? amen? Amen. We want to major on the majors. Because when you minor, when you major on the minors, that's what divides churches, that's what splits churches, that's what gets arguments started. But when you keep the main thing, the main thing, and what I'm talking about the main thing is the gospel, guys, the gospel of Christ. Paul says it over and over. I come preaching Christ crucified. Let God do the work after that. We'll be obedient. We'll have classes. We'll teach Bible studies. We'll have, we'll have men's gatherings and ladies' gatherings and classes. We'll have discipleship stuff. But trust God with the open door. Amen? Amen. Trust God with the open door. And you will see a revelation in your life that you have never experienced. Ever. Let's stand. Praise the prayer team. Praise prayer.